Greetings, James. I come to you from South Florida, where it's stickier in Casey Hamden's jockstrap, and the humidity makes maintaining a pristine mullet quite the task. Luckily, I have raccoon oil delivered fresh from the lawn through Pantsonat Auto Delivery Program to control my mullet frizz. They must have got some sort of technology grant from Ravenstall in order to keep quiet about all 17-year-old girls he took on dates with Kennywood. Yeah, you know about that. Glad to hear you's investigation of the Gatriots has come along. You'll blend in real natural like at Gillette Stadium. Be sure to mask Yin's magical Berg accent with the cringeworthy Bastonian disgrace to the English language. I mean, you just hear the Boston mayor give speeches and that. The alphabet's going to have to put out letters at A&R on a witness protection program at the rate they're being murdered in Baston. I'm not surprised at Yin's findings so far, considering the amount of high horse riding that happens in Jagland. I bet they have a special grandiose-looking white horse in that with a unicorn horn attached, ready for Goodell when he enters the rat's headquarters so he can pretend he's the prince of Narnia. Now let's discuss this thing I am setting up while Yins pull all of the underage skeletons out of Kraft's creepy closet. As Yins know, Miami is a hotbed for drug trafficking and being a perennial loser in the NFL. I mean, who names their team after a friendly aquatic mammal anyway? Sorry, Marino. Posing as a local NFL merchandise streetcar vendor in that, I have infiltrated a local organization by proving my loyalty as a mobile drug front for them on the streets. LeGarrette Blunt must pay for his poor influence on Le'Veon Bell, convincing him to hit the chronic and therefore getting Bell suspended for the first two games of the season, the first of which was against his current team, the Cheatrits. This was clearly a tactic set forth by Darth Hoodie himself last season as he had early access to the NFL schedule before anyone else. He knew his pack of storm poopers couldn't take down Steeler Nation without an advantage. During the New England and Miami game, I'll acquire a game pass posing as an NFL licensed vendor to sell jerseys inside a stadium. During the fourth quarter, among the madness of Dolphins fans trying to get out the game early because they are losing 49-3, to I will sneak into the Patriots locker room and I will plant several incriminating bags of merchandise in Blunt's locker. One of my associate's baby's mamas works for the TSA. She'll be sure that Blunt is searched prior to boarding the jet back to Jagland. Little does Blunt know, he's only a pawn in this game of Iron City Fuel Chess. Also, I have established a way to infiltrate every stadium in the NFL with Steeler Nation magic. I have expanded my streetcar business online so that I can ship black market jerseys all over the country. Little will my unsuspecting customers know that woven within the fibers of their team's jerseys will be threads from authentic terrible towels blessed by St. Myron Cope before his passing. Rest in peace, Myron. Therefore, they will unknowingly bring terrible towels in the spirit of Sir Myron Copen in our own stadium. With the powers of Steeler Nation chanting around the world and the blessed fibers of the terrible towel dispersed throughout stadiums across the country, much like when the Planeteers combine their rings to create Captain Planet. It's a great show, by the way. Our powers will combine to create the spirit of the Steeler Curtain with Eric P. Wee Pegram as a sidecar to the right, obviously. Steeler Nation will rise again, but I must return to the streetcar for now. Send down a case of iron if you can. All I can find in this shithole is Corona and Michelob Ultra, which I'm certain is water pretending to be beer. Yin's black and gold blood brother, Randall P. Petrosky.